Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Accountancy Tutorials. Today we are going to continue our lesson on IAS 40, Investment Property. And then we are going to continue by looking at, um, we are still on measurement and recognition. Now we are going to continue with measurement as subsequent recognition. And then we'll solve some questions. And then we'll look at transfers to or from investment property, as well as look at um, disposals and then the recognition of investment property. So this is what we want to do in this video. So without wasting my time, let us begin. Now we said that at initial recognition, the measurement approach is the cost model. But subsequently, you have two options. It's either you are going by the cost model or you go by the revaluation model or the fair value model. And so measurement as subsequent recognition. We have option to go by the cost model or we go by the fair value model. Now, I said in the previous video that the cost model under the subsequent recognition will be quite different from that of the uh, initial recognition. And this is what I mean. Now, at initial recognition, we have bought the asset and we, we value it at cost. And therefore, there is no de depreciation on the asset immediately because depreciation is after we have used the asset. Okay, so at initial recognition, we just represent the cost of the asset in the financial statement just as it was acquired according to the component of cost for investment property. But when it comes to subsequent years, we would have used the asset over the years. And therefore, we must we must make some provision for depreciation. And also we must test for impairment on the asset. And therefore the cost model under subsequent recognition is going to be, we are going to present the assets on the financial statement, the investment property, as the cost minus any accumulated depreciation, minus any accumulated impairment losses. So this is the current amount or the net book value to be included in the statement of financial position under the cost model. For it, that is if you are going by the cost model for subsequent. So it means subsequent years, you have to calculate for the accumulated depreciation, take it out of the cost. And if there is any impairment loss, take it out before you represent the final figure as a net book value or the carrying amount of the investment property. So this is just how to go by it. I will also talk about the fair value model and then we take a question. Now with the fair value model, with the fair value model, what we do is revaluation. So at the end of every year, there could be revaluation, okay? Now what happens is that when there is revaluation, it could be an upward or a downward revaluation. If it is an upward revaluation of the investment property, it means you are going to get a gain on revaluation and you treat that gain through the profit or loss statement as other comprehensive income. If it is a loss on revaluation, you also treat it the same way through income statement. Now, assuming that you have the value, fair value of an investment property to be 100 million, Ghana cities, and at the end of the year, it is revalued to 120 million. Then what it means is that this is an upward revaluation. The asset has moved from 100 to 120, and therefore you are going to recognize this whole 120 in your statement of financial position as the new value for the investment property. But the extra 20 that is an increase will be recognized as a gain on revaluation in the statement of comprehensive income or income statement. Now, this is what we are going to do. You see, look at the accounting equation. Assets must always be equal to your equity plus liabilities. Now, what we are saying is that if the asset is going up by 20 million difference, then it means that if you don't change something here, the accounting equation will not agree. And therefore, that extra 20 million will also be added to equity as a revaluation surplus. The 100 is already in there. Okay, we are adding 20, and therefore 20 must be added to equity. 
in the name of a revaluation surplus so that your statement of financial position will still agree. If it is a downward revaluation, let's assume that it reduced from 100 to 90, then it means that the difference of 10 will be rather subtracted from the asset. The asset value will now be 90 in the statement of financial position, and therefore 90 must be reduced from equity. Now, when you already have a revaluation surplus as part of your items of equity, then the reduction of 10 will be reduced from the revaluation surplus. But if it was the first time of creating revaluation, you do not have an original revaluation surplus, this is the first time, and you are supposed to reduce it, then it means that you cannot create a revaluation uh, loss, sorry. You cannot create a revaluation loss at the first time of revaluation if it happens that it's a loss. So what you need to do is that this loss of 10 CDs will be charged to income surplus account, okay, because it is the first time of revaluation and it is a loss on revaluation. So we charge it to income surplus account, our retained earnings account, so that in future, when there is an upward revaluation, we go back and defray that 10 CD before we move it up again to the new value. So that is what we do. Okay, we don't create a revaluation loss when it's a loss on the first time. But if it was a surplus or again, we create a surplus for that. And subsequently, if there are losses, then it means that we are going to subtract the losses from the revaluation surplus until a time when the revaluation surplus is finished. And then we now turn our eye to the retained earnings and begin to subtract any loss from there. And that, that is how we go about it. If you want more clarifications on this, you can look at my video on IES 16 PP. I took my time to explain this kind of revaluation surpluses. Okay. <clears throat> so having understood the idea of the cost model and the fair value model, I think it will be proper that we solve a question that will make our understanding enhanced. So without wasting my time, let us quickly look at this question and then discuss it together. Okay. FOG Limited prepares accounts to 31st December. It acquired an administration block with an estimated useful life of 50 years at a cost of 22 million Ghana cities on 1st January 2016. The entity used the building for five years until 31st December 2020 when it moved its office to a new building at the factory site. The building was reclassified as an investment property and leased out under a 40-year lease. The fair value of the building at 31st December 2020 was 24 million. Required, explain the treatment of the building in the 2020 and 2021 financial statements on the assumption that the entity uses A, the cost model for investment properties, B, the fair value model for investment properties. So that is the question. Okay. Okay, so looking at the question, it's obvious that you see that the investment property was acquired on 1st January 2016. So the asset was bought 1st January 2016. And then it had a useful life for 50 years. So it was bought at a cost of 22 million Ghana cities. That is what it means. And then it has a useful life of 50 years, the investment property. Now, what we are trying to say is that now we have used the assets for five years. According to the question, it says that the entity used the building for five years until 31st December 2020 when it moved its office to a new building in the factory site. So what we are trying to say, we have moved. We have bought the assets. We used the building for five years and then we have moved. So we have used it up to 31st December 2020, five-year period. The whole of 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, and the whole of 2020. That is five years. So at the end of the fifth year, we want to reclassify this. Now, this is about transfer from one category of asset to another category. We are trying to transfer this building from owner-occupied into investment property. And therefore, we have used it as PPE. 
all this while we have recognized it as PPE. But going forward, we want to recognize it as investment property. So we are supposed to tell how the entity should treat this in their books, this reclassification in their books in 2020 and the 2021 coming financial year. And so this is more like an advice question. So what we need to do is that we need to, first of all, find the net book value. And remember that we are told to do it under two different approaches. First of all, we should show how it should be done if the entity is using the cost model. And then we should also show how it should be done if the entity is using the revaluation model. So let us begin with the cost model. Now, under the cost model, what we need to do, we, we know that the reclassification is not a problem because once the year is ending 31st December, next year from 2021, we are supposed to use uh, recognize this as an investment property. But at what value? If you are using the cost model, you need to depreciate. Now, we have used it for five years. It had a useful life for 50 years. So what you need to do is that it's either you find a five years accumulated depreciation and then subtract from the cost, or you can just find the remaining useful life and then. So what you need to do is that the cost of the asset or the accumulated depreciation over the years for five years is going to be the 22 million over 50 years. So this is going to give you your annual depreciation charge times five. So times five means that we are getting the accumulated depreciation at once for five years. And that is going to give us 2.2 million. So this is the accumulated depreciation of the asset over the five years that it has been used as PPE. Okay. And so the net book value or the current amount at the end of the fifth year is going to be 22 million minus 2.2 million. And that is going to give us a current amount of 19.8 million. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the net book value of the asset, invest, uh, the PPE, because it was PPE for all that five years. We are now about to do the reclassification. So, this is the net book value of the proper, property, plants, and equipment, the building, at the end of the fifth year. Now, at the end of the fifth year, we have an intention to convert it to investment property. And therefore, we are told that how should the company treat it in the books in 2010 and in 2011. In 2010, because it was used as an, an owner-occupied property, this is what you advise, that the assets should be recognized or measured at 19.8 million because we are using the cost model in the financial statement. Now, we are not going to touch anything about the revaluation or the fair value given to us. That is for the revaluation method. That is for the revaluation method. For the cost model, we are going to recognize the asset in the, 2010, uh, in the 2020 financial year as 19.8 million. That is what you are going to say. And then you are going to say that in the subsequent years, in 2021 going, okay, from 2021 onwards, because we are converting it from an owner occupied to an investment property, what we are going to do is that in subsequent years, this 19.8 will move on, but then we are going to depreciate it for the remaining useful life, which is 45 years, as an investment property. And so going forward, from 2021 financial year, we are going to depreciate 19.8 million over 45 years. And it should be recognized in the financial statement as an investment property, because we have now moved and reclassified from IES 16 into IES 40. So that is how to go by the cost model. I'm sure it's very understandable. So now that we have understood how to go by the cost model, then we'll look at the revaluation model. So these things are what you will see. You will do these calculations and then you will talk. I told you that in standards, you have to write English in addition to the calculations you have done. So you convey the examiner, you are advising the company on how they should treat it going forward. Then we come to the revaluation model. Now, with a revaluation model, we are told that the asset was revalued at the end of 2020, was revalued to, uh, as 24 million. So the new fair value of the asset at the end of the fifth year is 24 million. Now, we know 
that the net book value from the cost model is 19.8 million. Listen, you cannot do the revaluation model if you don't know the cost model. So what we are trying to say is that we compare the net book value using the cost model to the fair value, and then we can see if there is any gain or loss from revaluation. And so before we do the revaluation model, this is what we do. Now, at the end of 2020, this is the fair value. Okay, so we are going to recognize it in the books as IS16 PP in the 2010 financial year. We'll recognize it at 24 million. And then what we are going to do is that the net book value, we compare the net book value at 2010 using the cost model, and which is 19.8 million. And so when we compare and we subtract, we are going to have 4.2 million Ghana cities as a gain on revaluation, revaluation surplus. Now, this is the treatment. In the 2020 financial year, you recognize 24 million in the financial statement as PP. Whilst you recognize this 4.2 million through profit or loss or income statement or other comprehensive income as a revaluation surplus and it's going to be part of the equity. Now, going forward from 2021, the investment property is now an investment property going forward. So the investment property will be recognized at 24 million in the financial statement, waiting for any further revaluations year after year. And so we are not going to, with the revaluation model, we are not going to depreciate this over the useful life of the asset. What we need to do, because we have adapted the revaluation model, we test every year, at the end of every year, we do a revaluation. And if the value remains the same, we maintain it. If the value decides to drop, then we recognize it as a revaluation loss. If the value goes up, we recognize that as a revaluation gain. And that is how it's going to be from 2021 onwards. Now, in 20, but in 2020, it will be recognized as PPE because in that year, that is the last year it was used as an owner-occupied property. But going forward from 2021, we are going to recognize investment property at 24 million, subject to end of year review for fair value adjustment. This is how it's going to be with the revaluation model. And so as a company, as a business, you can decide to go by the cost model or the revaluation model. But consistency is very necessary that if you are choosing any of the methods for subsequent recognition, you go by consistency. Just be consistent with your method. Okay, so having understood the cost model and the revaluation models practically, I want us to look at two more important aspects of investment property. We are going to look at transfers to and from investment property. And then, just like we did, a reclassification, okay? And then we are also going to look at the recognition of investment property. And then we'll know what to do next. Okay. Now, what I want us to look at, we are going to look at transfers and reclassifications. of investment property. Now, these transfers and reclassifications that I'm going to talk about is very important, so you need to pay attention. And then also, I'm going to talk about transfers to and then transfer from investment property. Now, Investment property could be transferred or reclassified. What I mean by transfer is not just about moving the physical property to another place, but it's about reclassifying it from one state to another state. So if you have an asset as investment property, just as we saw from the previous question, you can transfer or reclassify it into owner-occupied property, PPE, depending on the change of use, or you can transfer from PPE to investment property, just as we also saw from the question. You can also transfer or reclassify it from investment property to inventories or from inventories to investment property. And so we are going to look at these transfers, how it's done, and what should be the evidence before we, we should accept that it has been transferred. You don't just transfer or recognize an asset in your financial statement as having been transferred from one classification to another without evidence. And so we are going to talk about the reclassifications 
and then the evidence that must, that must back and the evidence that must back them before we accept to recognize them in their new reclassified state. And so let us begin with when you want to transfer from investment property to owner-occupied property. So I'll say transfer from investment property. Permit me to use IP for investment property because of how long it is. So investment property to PP. PP is owner-occupied property. Now, if you want to transfer your building from an investment property to PP, what should be the evidence that will convince the accountant to reclassify it in the books from investment property to PP? Now, the only evidence you need is the commencement of owner occupation. So please take note. Commencement of owner occupation. What do I mean by commencement of owner occupation? Now, when the owner begins to occupy the building, then it's no more an investment property. For example, you have a building that you have been renting out to tenants. That particular year, from the beginning of the year, you have evicted all the tenants or the agreement, lease agreement is over, and you have now taken over your own building and you are occupying it yourself as a company for your own business purpose. Now, the moment you begin to occupy it, from that very moment, it's reclassified from investment property to PPE. It is no more an investment property because it has become an owner-occupied property. And the evidence is when you commence the occupation, you have started living in it. Now, what I mean by commencement, you don't just take it for granted. When it happens like that, the accountant is free to now reclassify that particular building from investment property into property, plant, and equipment. Now, what I mean by commencement, when the agreements with the previous tenants are up and they move out of the building, even though your intention is to go and stay there and use it personally, you cannot recognize it as owner-occupied or PPE, except you have actually started living there. So if, even though you have evicted them or their agreement is due and they are out of the building, and you are yet to occupy, but your mind is that you are having an intention to occupy, but you have not yet occupied. It is still idle, but you are yet to occupy. But your intention is to occupy. You have not. Once you have not commenced occupation, please don't recognize this as PPE. It will continue to be an investment property in the books until you actually move in to occupy. That is when you can reclassify and call it PPE. These things are very important because these are the theoretical underpinnings of some of the questions that you are going to meet to advise on. So you should be very careful that except there is evidence that the owner has actually moved in to occupy the building, it cannot be reclassified from investment property to PPE. It will continue to be an investment property until there is evidence that the owner has started occupying the building. That is the first classification or reclassification issue. Or transfers okay now the next one that I'm going to talk about let's talk about the opposite when you want to transfer from PP to investment property so transfer from PP to investment property when you want to do the opposite and transfer from PP to that is from owner occupied property to an investment property now the only evidence you need is the end of owner occupation. In other words, you have evidence that the owner is no more occupying the building. You cannot continue to live in the building and tell us that you are reclassifying it to investment property just because you have an intention of renting it out. We don't do that. We only classify or reclassify it from PPE to investment property when there is an end of owner occupation, in other words, there is evidence that the owner has moved out. That's one, even if new tenants has not come in, once you have moved out, then we can reclassify it as an investment property because we are sure that you are going to actually rent it out. So that is the second condition when there is a transfer from PPE to investment property. Okay. Now the next transfer that or next reclassification that I'm going to talk about is a transfer from 
investment property to inventories. When you want to transfer from investment property to inventories. So in other words, you are going to convert a reclassify an investment property as inventories. Now, what evidence do you need? The evidence you need is commencement of development with a view to sale. With a view to sell. Now, let me explain this very, for you very well. An investment property is a non-current asset. Inventories are a current asset. Now, inventories are your normal trading goods that you sell. And therefore, you cannot easily convert an investment property that is not close to what you are selling. Take note. So let's assume that you are into trading of uh, beverages, okay? And you have a building that you have leased out as an investment property. You cannot convert that building into inventories because your inventories are minerals, water, and those kind of soft drinks. You cannot do that. The reason is that it is not closely related to your trading goods. And therefore, if you, are, if you want to sell such a building, you still continue to sell it as a sale of a non-current asset. But if this thing will work perfectly for real estate companies, in a real estate world, they, their inventory is the buildings that they are selling and the lands. And so we, they see that as buildings that are inventories. Now, if they have one particular building that is an investment property that has been um, rented out, okay, and they decide to convert it from investment property to inventory, in other words, they want to sell it, that is possible because their normal trading goods is still the building. And so in that case, they will have to let the tenants leave the building after the agreement is over and then commence development with a view to sell. So until the tenants has moved out, it cannot be reclassified. And once it's moved out, you have to see that they are working on it and then they are now putting it up for sale as part of their normal trading stock. Then we can call it inventories now. And in that case, the standard will permit you to reclassify it from your books. It will no more be an investment property, but then it will now be reclassified as part of your inventories. That is what we mean. And the evidence you need is commencement of development with a view to sell. Now, let us also look at the opposite. The opposite is also there. There could be a transfer from inventories to investment property. That is the opposite of it. Now, when you have inventories and you want to convert it to investment property, the evidence that you need is the commencement of an operating, sorry, is the commencement of an operating lease to another party. And I'm going to explain. Now, please take note. This is the opposite of the third point. This time, we are, we are rather trying to reclassify inventory as investment property. Now, inventories are normal trading goods. In the same way, just like a real estate company, you can decide that these buildings or lands that you are selling, you are taking one out, and then you want to make it an investment property. Now, in that case, there should be evidence. And that could not even be in the case of real estate alone. Let us assume the automobile companies, those that sell cars, their motor vehicles remain their inventories or stock. But they can decide to take one vehicle out from the inventory, put it aside for rentals, so that people can come and rent the vehicle, and then they will get some rental income from that vehicle. Now, please take note. You cannot reclassify it easily from inventories to investment property until you see that there is a commencement of an operating lease to another party. In other words, someone has come actually to rent it out. So the moment you see the first person renting it and the company taking rental income from that vehicle, then you can reclassify it from that year onwards. You reclassify that from inventories to investment property and the standard accept that. Okay, so if there has not been any commencement, you cannot just say, I have an intention to rent this out. I have put this aside. When there is no commencement of a lease, operating lease, we cannot call that as an investment property. Before inventories can be reclassified as investment property, there needs to be evidence that actually there is a start of an operating lease 
with another party. And that is when the standard permits you to change that from your financial statement, that it will no more be called inventories, but we can reclassify that as an investment property. And that is what we are talking about. Okay. Now, these things that I'm talking about, they are so important for your questions that you are going to meet. They are very technical. Some of them you need to advise the company. And these things come in a lot, okay? Trying to trick and then uh, put you in a state of confusion. But when you understand them very well, you always be in a better position to advise. And you always advise with these evidences. And so you cannot just look at this. These are the most important ones, the evidences that you need before the standard will permit you to do the reclassification. Okay. And the final one that I will talk about, which is also very important, is a transfer from investment property under construction to an investment property. And someone will say, hey, what is the meaning of that? Remember that when we were talking about um, investment properties, we said that uh, trans uh, a building that is being, examples of investment property, we said that the building that is being constructed for future use as an investment property is also an investment property. But the classification of that in the financial statement will be different. Because once the building is not yet completed, we cannot start using. And because we cannot start using, we cannot start depreciating. And therefore, it will be there as an investment property at a value that we can determine. Or we can disclose that as an investment property in a financial statement. But the moment the completion or the construction or the development is done, then we need to transfer it from a state of investment property under construction. That whole phrase. We convert it from that state to a fully completed investment property. And what evidence do we need to do that? The only evidence we need is the end of construction or development. So the moment we have evidence that construction has been completed, then we can convert it from IP under construction into fully completed investment property. And that is what we need to understand with the transfers. Okay. It's very, very important that we understand these things that I have said. Very technical and very important. All right. So having understood the transfers, one key important point that I also need to talk about is about the recognition of investment property. And that is where we are going to look at the disposal option as well. And so let us look at the recognition of investment property. So the recognition of investment property. The recognition of investment property. Now, what do we mean by derecognition? It's the opposite of recognition. Recognition means incorporating the asset into the, onto the financial statement. So derecognition means you are taking it off the financial statement. Now, there are two conditions for derecognition of investment property. The first one is disposal. You cannot derecognize an investment property. You cannot take it off from your books except you have sold it. Disposal. Now, disposal has two options. It's either you are disposing through sale of the asset, sale of the investment property, or through creation of a finance lease. So these are the two options under disposal. It's either you are disposing it of through sale of the investment property. So when we say disposal under investment property, it's not just about selling the asset for cash. But once you use it to create a finance lease, then it is deemed to have been disposed of. Because one of the conditions of the finance lease agreement is that it is likely that the ownership of the assets will be transferred to the lessee at the end of the lease term. So we always assume that once you have created a finance lease, you are parting way with the assets, uh, the ownership of the assets. And therefore, disposal actually means you are either selling the assets for cash or you are creating a finance lease with it. You know that an operating lease continues to make it an investment property, but a finance lease makes it a disposal in effect. That is what we mean. And that is the situation that can permit you to recognize that investment property from your financial statement. 
So unless any of these two has happened, you don't call it a disposal. And that means you cannot derecognize it from your financial statements. Okay. Now, the second condition for derecognition of the investment property, the second condition that can permit you to take it off from your books is when the property is permanently redrawn from use. Withdrawn from use. When the property is permanently withdrawn from use and that no future economic benefit will be obtained. So, and no future economic benefits will flow to the entity from the asset. Because remember the recognition criteria that there are two, that if there are future economic benefits that are probable to flow to the entity, that is the first criteria, and that if the cost can be measured reliably. But once you have stopped using it, and that no future economic benefits will flow to the entity from the asset. Why do you keep it in your book still? You need to derecognize it so that you can get a true and fair view of your financial performance and position. And therefore, these are the two conditions that can permit a company to derecognize investment property. The first one is disposal. And the disposal is in two options. Either you are selling the investment property or you are creating a finance lease agreement with it. And then secondly, when you have withdrawn the property from use and that no future economic benefit will flow to the entity from the property, then you can confidently derecognize investment property from your financial statements. Okay. Now, this brings us to the end of the part two of our lesson on investment property. Now, in the part three of this lesson, we are going to solve some questions and then also talk about some disclosure requirements. Remember to subscribe to this channel if it is your first time. Share this video, like, comment, and let us see how you've been helped. Continue to follow this channel and then recommend it to other people. And then I can assure you that your fortunes will be turned for good. We'll meet again for the part three. But until then, it's bye for now.